Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And I was this... busy shredding, Kevin. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, we now have video. As you may have noticed in the last episode, if you didn't, you get to see us now. Yes. Sorry about that. The last episode um, and the one before that. Yes. So, not the one before that. Yeah, this is the Sunday episode, Kevin. You're right. We recorded Thursday and then Friday and now today. <laughs> we don't pre-record ever. No, uh, to get all that awkwardness out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going out of town. Kevin? You were out of town last week. I was, I was, but now it's your turn. Yeah, uh, now it's so my turn. So we we're having to pre-record a bit. Jam some um, stuff together. So uh, we apologize. I'm wearing the same shirt as I was in the Thursday episode. I was too, but I love the shirt. Look at the monkey. Any uh, D&D players know what this dude is? He's not just protecting my pectoral muscles. Or lack thereof. All right, so... Why don't you... <laughs> Why don't you talk to the people? Sorry. A little bit about Patreon. <clears throat> people. If you want to fund what you just saw... <laughs> His uh, pectoral. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fund my steroid <laughs> abuse, or lack thereof. Um, nah, I, I'm, like a, I'm like a spaghetti noodle, right? We're yeah. so off topic already. Look, we are, we're less than two minutes in. Look. Maybe, I don't you know. You know the drill, guys. We're on Patreon. Please go find us. Uh, at least look at those pledge goals. They're mm-hmm. pretty fun. Would they you are say? fun. Um, a couple of them, you get to hang out with us, yeah. and we want to hang out with you. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah. Um, so check them out. Uh, if there's something you would rather see, hey, tell us. Yeah. It's, it's you know open to consideration. Um, if you yeah. note, if you did see our next the two episodes ago, episode twenty six Thursdays Thursdays. Uh, we did a sort of update on mm-hmm. the channel sort yep. of at the end of that video uh or that podcast episode so if you listen right. to it or if you saw it uh you'll know sort of our direction for things we're wanting this to be yeah. a community and so in order to do that i think patreon is sort of our way forward yes and agreed for agreed. you guys to to be a part of that would be fantastic we hope that uh you consider it at least so i had a little baby burp i'm it's sorry beautiful. you can see it now i don't have to play it off yeah, normally we just we used to just play it off like we never yeah, did it, it or we if it was obvious we just hey. Right. But uh, look, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Pros and cons. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. We're here to we're talking magic, Kevin. Yes, not burps. <laughs> um <laughs> Kiki Weekly time. <laughs> bam, bam. Um all right guys, you know what this segment is. Yeah. It's the best named segment ever. It's the Kiki Weekly I think where so. we feature just a combo. Uh, it doesn't have to be a good combo, although in this instance, at one time, it was a good combo. Yeah, it was um, pretty good. In modern, specifically. Uh, it wasn't tier one, but we're talking no. today about Jeskai Ascendancy. Whoop, whoop. Uh, it's which this, is... It's, got, it won, it's won some tournaments. It has. Um, it's not a bad deck by any means. It's a very fun no. deck to play, although yes. a little bit tricky uh, as far as your timing on everything. Oh, um, gosh. Yeah. But... I mean, the namesake card is Jeskai Ascendancy. You get plus one, plus one counters on a creature. And, well, counters. You get buffs until the end of the turn. Right. And you get to loot, and you get to untap everything. Um, so a whole lot of stuff going on every time you play a spell. Lord, yes. Um, and in light of that, you play a bunch of cantrips. Uh, a lot of card draw spells, things like mm-hmm. Faithless Looting, which lets you loot for very cheap. Uh, back in the day when Gataxian Probe was legal right. and modern, uh, Gataxian Probe was a prime card for this. Oh, totally. Um, in addition to things like Mana uh, things that generate you mana. Um, and it runs a, a creature package of Birds of Paradise, Sylvan Caryatid, things like that. And this is, I should mention, just one iteration of this deck. Yeah. There are a few variations. There's um, different ways to play it. Absolutely. Some of them don't run. Uh, there's another creature in the deck, usually, that's called Fate Stitcher, uh, that if you get into the graveyard, you can unearth it anytime you'd like so and good. go off that way. Some right. people like to not play that at all and just play a Birds of Paradise, pump it mm-hmm. up and swing in. And that's that fine. works fine. Other people use uh, Glittering Wish, which is a card that basically says you get to pick a multicolored card from your sideboard and play it. Um, yeah. And they'll flesh and blood somebody for however much damage their creature can deal. Uh, that way they skip their attack phase. But yeah. And that's a. Ooh, it's so good. It's it's very good. It, it's fairly sneaky. Um, mm-hmm. And once you go off, I mean, you're just. You, you got it. It's, um, yeah, it's very hard to break that up. Yeah. Well, um, for most decks. For some, most decks. Um, and it works very well with cards like Sylvan Caryatid because right. it has hexproof. And so if you flesh and blood based off of the Sylvan Caryatid, you, I mean, your opponent can't like path your 
you're yeah. so, it, it, they can't do too much right so they've got to like fog or yeah yeah jump well you can't jump in front of flesh and blood yeah there's very few things there's they can very do at that few point. things it limits that number yeah um and so there it's a very cool deck it is its own deck uh mm-hmm. the whole combo is the deck so i mean uh the, i would talk about specific pieces but the whole deck is the piece yeah so. it's really you play things to both get cards in your hand mm-hmm. cheap spells to work with just guy ascendancy to pump a thing and yep. everything you do is for that goal yep it's either to find a combo piece or make it go off yeah right um and it's fantastic it's yeah. it's a deck that i've made a number of times mm-hmm. in two or three different iterations um and it does very well yeah it's solid it's a very fun uh, deck, and it feels good now it is complicated there are a lot of moving parts yeah uh, um especially with fate stitcher especially <laughs> um yeah um whew. the idea is that you untap a land with fate stitcher or you untap a birds of paradise tap it get some mana and then play something with the jeskai mm-hmm. ascendancy trick so it untaps and then you get to tap it again basically you get it's... mana every for every spell you play right um sometimes if you've got multiple ascendancies out or if you've got uh free spells in your hand you actually net mana um yes. that's not always the case but you can yeah, um, you've usually got mana so, to play the things yeah. sort of for free. Well, in most of your say? deck, are, is it's like one drop yeah. stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's very easy <clears throat> to make that happen once you get the pieces out. Um, yes. But yeah, so that I actually highly recommend. I know uh, Gitaxian Probe is banned, but um, if Bummer. you're just playing for fun and you do have a lot of the cards uh, for the Jeskai Ascendancy list or just any list that you feel would be fun, I recommend playing this combo. It's a really good way to get used to playing a combo deck that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't outright feel like a combo deck. Like you're starting off usually playing like a Birds of Paradise or something along those lines, just ramping, and then you get to the combo piece. And the combo is very repetitive. Yeah, uh, so yeah, once you get true. it down, it you'll you'll know what to do. Mm-hmm. But it is a bit tricky, so you have to make sure, sure you get it there. So sure. I recommend trying this out. Um, yeah, or at least watching a pro play it. Yeah, um, there's um, probably a few videos i'm sure there's multiple videos online about it uh i know it was played in a few of the the tournaments so i'm sure you can find it yeah um yeah a good kiki weekly there i I love that deck i really love that deck. it's solid it's it's quick yeah can come out of nowhere yeah um which is perfect Uh for our sunday topic okay so this is filler fun day filler sunday as you know uh, and a few episodes past, we did a little bit of, uh, magic theory stuff. Um, and I wanted to kind of touch on a little more, some things that I was reading, um, okay. that I'm kind of just picking up, just learning. I'm excited to hear what you have to say. I'm I don't know. Too. This is all your episode at this point. So, oh, you really got it in there. <laughs> yeah, I can, I'm, I'm good. Oh now, yeah. I man. forgot you are randomly good at things. That's my secret talent. It's like my mutation. I don't know. <laughs> if it, we ever do like a... I'm like the worst X-Men. That's... Yeah. I'd be like... Pop, that's accurate. Popcorn would be my name for sure. Popcorn. They, they'd be like, go, annoy the enemy. I'd would be like, it be like... Hey. You'd be like... Look at me. Not even buttered popcorn, just popcorn. <laughs> no. Layered popcorn. <laughs> when I get really fat and old. <laughs> buttered popcorn. <laughs> Annoy uh, them and sit on them. You might get one. Sorry. Anyway. <clears throat> what were we talking about? Magic Your theory. topic. I don't know. This is my show, Kev. You're along for the ride. Okay. So magic theory. It's not often talked about anymore. Um, there's so many different facets uh, that you can go into. It's, it's tricky. Extensive. But focusing on one um, that I was reading up on a few days ago, I'll bring forward to you because it's good to think about, as okay. most of these things are. Today it's inevitability. inevitability. What does that mean? I'm glad you asked, Kev. Uh, inevitability is a word in the English language. Uh, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> in magic, uh, <laughs> it's a strategic thought that basically means mm-hmm. if all things are equal on the board, one deck is going to win given enough time. Okay. And that's not might win, is going to win. It will win. Yes. Gotcha. Um now with inevitability so much can change so yeah, even the definition yeah. sometimes changes um more abstract abstractly rather uh it's just an element you need to consider in all parts of the game mm-hmm. i'm talking preparation deck building sideboarding uh it's something that's kind of always in the back of your mind um yep. that if you're 
familiar with magic, you might already be thinking about and not even realize it. Okay. Right. So let's go into it. <clears throat> Talk to me, Will. I'd love to, man. I'd love to. So imagine on the board, we are staring at board. pairs of creatures that we really can't attack into, um, but that I can't block if you attack and you can't block if I attack. It's stalled. It's just we're, we're Bunch dead. of two threes. Sure. Yes. Two threes with nothing but vigilance or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay. There's probably one or two out there. Um, <laughs> so if we're looking at that, but in your deck, you know you've got a copy of Overrun. Okay. You know that, all right. Eventually I'll if get If I that. pull Overrun, mm-hmm. I'm fine. Yeah. Overrun, if you don't know, plus three, plus three, and trample to all of your creatures. So Pretty awesome card. Yeah, it's sweet. It's a great instant anthem. Mm-hmm. Um, it's solid. If I don't have that, if I'm just like... If you just have more two threes. Yeah. <laughs> I've got one more of this and a, a one with, with lifelink, and I'm going to be great. Nah, you did. Uh, <laughs> I don't have... The payoff card. Right. I don't have that inevitability right. that he does. Um, other examples are creatures with evasion. Mm-hmm. If you think back to our uh, casual game we talked about on Thursday, um, I had my big dragon. I forgot yes. what his name was. Something jam dragon, but... Fleet raspberry jam dragon. It's not an actual jam. Anyway, this With peanut butter, <laughs> peanut butter jelly dragon. My <laughs> dragon, uh, <laughs> flying obviously, fire breathing obviously. It's just great. Yeah. Um, I knew if I pulled him, you didn't have that many answers for it. I was in a really good spot. Yeah. That was my quote unquote inevitability. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a that's a loose form of it. It's yeah. not really as good as others, but there it goes. Okay. Uh, burn sometimes is inevitability you yeah. can use it as removal or if i'm holding a pair of lightning bolts and i get you to six you got it i know that most likely yeah that next turn probably i'm holding lethal yeah that's just hand to face damage yep <laughs> done that's is my that what a lightning bolt sounds like yes oh if i ever if i ever top two top two <laughs> in any tournament okay and i can win with two lightning bolts I'll You're just... gonna make that noise. <laughs> yeah, I can't make that noise. Can you not? Not. No. We'll practice later. It's right. fine. We gotta get you these. You know, so when you play at F and M's, you're like freaking people out. <laughs> Mental games, mind games. Yeah. Anyway, it's an important part of magic. <clears throat> Kevin, that's inevitability. Um, having some form of, I just need to not die, and then I can win with this. Okay. Right. Yeah. So then, why does it matter? That's so obvious, right? Well, two decks pitted against each other. One is, unless it's a mirror match, one is definitely got inevitability over the other. Yeah. Right? And one does not. <clears throat> um, speaking of the Jeskai Ascendancy deck. Yeah. That's got really strong inevitability. Sometimes as soon as turn four, mm-hmm. sometimes turn three. Yeah. Pretty much as soon as you have Jeskai Ascendancy on the board, untap, you could go off. Yeah. Right? So t- a turn three, inevitable play yes it's pretty scary it's pretty awesome um decks like a rakdos aggro deck has no inevitability yeah and i was actually gonna ask Mm -hmm. so for the red deck wins Mm -hmm. style decks their inevitability would be quite low because Mm -hmm. they're relying on small creatures just dealing damage right right so if the thought is given enough time this deck will win time is not on the red no it is not Not they need to be closing it out turn three turn four yeah at least making them look at lethal on their yeah. board. And if they can't do that, they'll probably lose. Mm-hmm. We talked about that in the aggro episode. Time is not on their side. Um, now, burn helps, and burn is a major part of those decks. Sure. It can give you reach, but if you think about it, really by turn four, they've played their hand, so they're top decking. Yeah. If you top deck a lightning bolt into someone who's comboing off next turn, good job. It doesn't really matter right. at that point. Right. I mean, yeah. three damage is always nice, but yeah. you know, it's not great. Um so with that in mind, it matters because the player without it wants to race. Okay. Really, no matter what your deck is, yeah, you want to race. Player with it wants to stall. Yeah. To get to that thing. Uh, again, it's really strong in a combo deck. Mm-hmm. Really strong in tempo and control decks. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, it. It's it's the thought really that drives tempo decks. Yeah. I right? mean, I would say it's definitely the principle from what it sounds. Again, sure. Having not done any research on my own it sounds like this is what the tempo deck is built for yeah right last until you can inevitably win 
which is yeah. what you want. So yeah, it seems perfect. Um, you can think of it like setting up a play to win, setting up lethal, mm-hmm. or you can think about it like a combo, right? Yeah, I yeah. guess, or or one card that doesn't. Some sort of right. card or combo of cards that can mm-hmm. guarantee you a win. Right. Is that what you're shooting? For? Okay. Yes, totally. Um, so when you should think about this, we mentioned before deck building. Uh, it is an essential part of deck building. Yeah. Um, because you need to consider, along with card advantage, kind of, can my deck survive with its inevitability now? Mm-hmm. Do I need to add another piece that makes it easier to get to or stronger? Um, or do I want to just kind of ignore that factor completely and make my red deck wins? Or my, um, what was it? The red Marad? I don't know. I read some old deck back when uh, uh, the Kithkin set was around oh lore Lorwin. Lorwin. there was some cool red deck oh. going around there it was basically red deck wins but yeah, yeah. called something different there's always a form of red deck yeah. wins there's there's always a red deck win somewhere and it uh, might win probably. not always <laughs> i mean you know it's whatever. anyway i love the red deck wins but <clears throat> not to get off topic um <laughs> again we always do guys i'm it's I'm gonna get off topic really quick. Here's what That's happens fine. every time we do an episode. Talk to me. One of us does the research for the episode, and one of us is the designated I'm gonna put tangents in this episode person. Yeah. When you do the research, I just throw in, oh, like this thing. And I usually and then say, that, yeah. that sparks it. Yeah. Because I know it's gonna spark it. <laughs> it doesn't take much. You do me, the same with me. And I do That's it all with, I'm saying. with pleasure. It's I mean it's a delight. I don't know thanks, if they man. appreciate it. I hope we hope you do. You're so That's like you what we it. do most of the time, anyway. We're so. just hanging out talking about magic, man. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, <laughs> so let's get back <laughs> real quick while I <laughs> formulate my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, when do you think about it? Again, deck building, of course. Do you need to add more? Um, if you're trying to race and that's your primary goal, don't worry about it. Just put in cards with reach. Put in your fast guys. You know how to win with aggro decks. Yeah. Super simple. In tempo decks, they fall victim to weak inevitability. Okay. In that, usually in a tempo, and kind of in control too, unless it's a combo piece, it's a big stompy guy. Okay. Or it's a big board. So it's a consolidated threat, making right. it easier to get rid of. Exactly. Okay. Um, again, in the different ways you can think about it, inevitability mm-hmm. can be overrun. Yeah. It can be Lightning Bolt, or it can be Sarah Angel for some decks. So then, in another... <clears throat> Another form of this, I guess, would be a prison style deck where you just lock the opponent out of the game. Yes, exactly. So, that. like Lantern Control being a modern example where yes. you basically just lock them off of everything. Yeah, and that's super strong. You can, yeah. whatever your win con is in Lantern, you can just kind of wait and get to it. Yeah. They'll probably scoop if they're locked. <laughs> I might. And I wouldn't. Feel, I would. I'd feel bad about it, but I'd be like, yeah, no, I have no choice. Lantern now. feels so bad. Oh, yeah. To play against. Definitely. But I mean, yes, that's a great point. It mm-hmm. doesn't always have to be a consolidated threat. It can be a board state, mm-hmm. a prison state. Um, it can be, again, one play, one overrun. Yeah. Um, decks that uh, I consider to have the strongest inevitability combo decks, storm decks, really. Um, <laughs> but this isn't the consensus for most Magic players. They think okay. c- control decks have the strongest inevitability. I think I would more agree on the control <clears throat> side. Um, right. And the reason being, uh, with something like a Storm deck, for instance, mm-hmm. you start going for your combo. So you start can- playing all these cantrips, you know, playing all these draw spells, whatever. Then you play your Grave Shot, your Empty, your whatever your Storm card is. Sure. If you just counter Fluster Storm, got it. Doesn't happen. Well, yes. Or you just fizzle, which is also a very... True. Important thing to note with something like a storm deck, it's very easy to fizzle. Yes, it's also very can. easy to get the win, but you have to play it correctly. True. Um, with a control deck, it's nice because you can sit back, play that control route, mm-hmm. um, sort of keep them off of their stuff, and then when you do draw your bomb, ideally, I think you're right, it's easier to get rid of a singular bomb versus a right. com- you know. But if you are playing a control deck, you have protection ideally probably yeah um you're gonna Mm. have a counter spell backup most likely hopefully um you're gonna have some of that going Mm -hmm. on and so it makes it like more likely that it's going to stick and it's also worth noting too in a combo deck if you break up the combo with any one card that's just as bad as 
you know, taking away the bomb in the control deck. True. Um, not always in the instance that if if they can get that other, if they've got another copy of that that combo piece and they do draw it at some point, then they could potentially go off. But I just mean, ideally, they're going to have another bomb in the control deck anyway. So it's sort of the same amount of right. of inevitability, I guess, in that respect. Um, right. And say. that's the primary argument is mm-hmm. that you can protect your win in yeah. a control deck much better. So you can just kind of wait yeah. and relax and get there. Um, and that in a combo deck, again, you can disrupt it. Yeah. Now, the difference here, it's really... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's really... <laughs> you just kind of have to see does the control deck have the protection yeah does the control deck have the counter if i am playing jeskai and i'm going off turn three but you maybe you just played a um it's not librarian it's guys either no maybe sure it can be geist um guys of saint trap but there's a there's Played a, on turn three there's a card that taps that draws your card and that's it i can't remember what it's called I don't remember. Doesn't sound all that good. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's one one that drives you card. Anyway. Yeah, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, but if they're tapped out, they can't play anything, which a control, control deck won't usually be. Yeah. But especially early turns, you yeah. usually leave it up. Yeah. But it, it also, I think um, something to keep in mind with this, if you're deck building, you're making a modern deck, mm. you can plan for that. You plan to play your counters early in the game and then be able to play threats late. Of course. If you're in a draft scenario, you don't get that luxury. Um, and true. so the inevitability of a control deck in something like modern changes from modern to a draft setting, right? Because well, absolutely. Uh, there's a huge difference there because you can draft a control deck, but it's not going to be the finely tuned control deck that you're, yeah. you, you may be used to if you're playing a constructed format. Right. So um, I think there you're right. You could very easily get into a situation where you kind of have to deploy your threats a little earlier than yeah. you'd like. And then you could lose off to the combo deck. True. Um, which there are combos in limited. It's not that often. They're not that strong. No. Though. I mean, it's limited. Everything is. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, that being said, if I've got a catcher in my deck, and I know that just eventually <laughs> I can just get her and change then the board Then your inevitability state. is great. Or Bantu. Yeah. Oh. Whoop, whoop. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, different ways to think about that. Moving yeah. to point two, because I can get off topic some more. <laughs> um you need to think about it in game pretty much all the time um and that's a super vague thing to say but almost at the top of every turn once you draw your card everything could change just depending so thinking about that helps a lot <clears throat> um the two most important uh places to me that stuck out stuck out stuck out stucco uh <sighs> in a stalled game and yeah. versus a combo deck okay so in a stall game Am I close to my to my win? Am I close to my inevitable guy, my mm-hmm. dragon, my whatever? If I am, if I think I am, or I just need to bet on whatever, mm-hmm. can I afford to play defensive? Can I afford to play aggressive? So start that race a turn early or right. something should like I that. Should I start it or should yeah. I just wait back? Yeah. Because if I can just get to my walking ballista, drop yeah. them for I don't know, eight, mm-hmm. however that happens, uh that's pretty good yeah that's amazing right? that's a lot of reach um i might just want to play defensively and just yeah. wait yeah make you risk your creatures and not mine yeah um something like that or if i know that this is what i've got i'm looking at my board and i know my bombs are there i just need to go now yeah there then just are. do it right um no i think you're exactly right um planning and this comes down to knowing your deck Totally. I think very well. Yeah. Um, and this is just a good point for anybody <clears throat> playing constructed or limited. Doesn't matter. Know what cards <clears throat> you have in your deck. Don't just yeah. play to those cards, right? Like, you know, if you don't have a sweeper and they have a board full of creatures and you have like one or two, all right, well, you probably lost that game. Like, I'm not saying 100%. No, it depends but, on the creatures, but you but know. But most likely you didn't win. Probably Sorry, not. scoop, try again later. Right. But. Um, if you know you have a sweeper in your deck, give yourself the best opportunity to get that sweeper. Yeah, just wait. Play your draw spells. Play whatever you can to get to it. Mm-hmm. But if you know it's there, it will hopefully show up. Yeah. And if it shows up in time, you're in good shape. Absolutely. Um, but that's the key, and I, that's a good point. You you have to know what what you're playing for. 
Yeah, give um, yourself the chance to win. Yeah, is important. I think there's there have been plenty of games where I give up a turn earlier and I'm like, oh, if I had only waited two more turns and yep. maybe survived, I could have turned this. Yeah, you know. But then of course there's everything on top of their deck and this does that. Yeah, so many variables affect inevitability that the board honestly changes the way you think about it mm-hmm. and should. <clears throat> right? If I'm if I'm playing a control deck and I know they've got Ah, some bomb that I know I need to save my counter for, and I've only mm-hmm. got one. And they drop Aetherworks, and I'm like, "That's not it, but I really <laughs> need to counter that." <laughs> you probably would, yeah, right. Yeah. So that that can change it entirely. Um, um, or Karn, do you want to counter Karn or wait for <laughs> Ugin? <laughs> <laughs> um, another right. thing I think is really important to think about too is. Um, and this comes down to knowing your opponent's decks and knowing mm-hmm. what they're playing. So in a matchup, for instance, where you're playing against a red deck, sure. their inevitability long game isn't that good. Well, it's so, like we said, it's yeah. non-existent. Um, so if you're down to, let's say, nine life, okay, they swing in with two two twos, maybe a two three three, something like that. The potential to get you into that lightning bolt range. Play as if you're basically make lightning bolt less effective if possible give them less inevitability because well, if you're yeah, pulling you know absolutely. if you can pull a card that basically means you win which happens a lot um <laughs> against the red deck wins right. then you know play to that i'm just saying yeah. like don't let your life total get so low that you give them more outs than yourself right so does you, that make sense yes you so sort of to to reframe it play around their win i mean yeah and that's kind of goes without saying in magic but i think you're absolutely right and if you know that they've got a card that's like say they're playing overrun yeah but that's not their win con (laughs) like off the top yeah but you know they've got it if you can get some guys off their board ping some guys it's probably it's worthwhile doing yeah yeah. if Um, you know that threat's coming you should you should play to that it just makes the cards in there the i mean ideally what you want to do is make their cards worse or less effective for them absolutely Um, so if you can do that, I think play to that. Uh, mm-hmm. It's that's something that, like you said, it sort of goes without saying, but you do need to be thinking about it yep. when you're playing a matchup. Um, it's a little bit harder to plan for things in a draft setting because it's a little. It's it's not like they have a standard build for red deck wins, right? Like if you sure. if you're playing a red mm-hmm. deck wins, you're gonna mm-hmm. have bolts, you're gonna have certain cards. Yep. If you're drafting a deck, you don't know what they have necessarily. Right. Um. But you should know the cards in the set that you're drafting mm-hmm. and give yourself outs to as many of those cards as possible yeah so um someone who does this really well is when you see lsv play drafts um yeah he will kind of always think okay well how could i lose right yeah. now um and that's a big takeaway that stuck with me for um pretty much any game i play whether it was <laughs> football back in the day whether it was chess whether it was magic whatever it is how could i mess this up yeah what's gonna make me lose um and think around those lines um and that's not to say if you've got lethal on the board you might shouldn't play safe just go for that Mm -hmm. um but that is to say if you don't and you think they could be close to comboing off do you have a plan b yeah i like including plan b's in my deck to give it that inevitability yeah um and that's a whole other subject we could go on but right well no you're exactly right um it's it's just a matter of playing to your strengths and playing around around your opponent's strengths giving them less of the opportunity um and hopefully you more of it yeah and versus a combo are they close to their combo will they go off next turn and if so can you put them in a position where that's not beneficial yeah can you disrupt it so if they're only holding a card and I've got thought seize. <laughs> I just drew thought it. seize them. <laughs> yeah, just do it. Uh, uh, if, even if you don't hit, you know what's in their hand now. Yeah. Um, even if they have just a land in hand, that's fine. You know that you don't have mm-hmm. to worry about the combo that turn. Right. Um, and, and that gives you plays. Yeah. Information is a whole other topic. Oh magic. my gosh, yes. But I mean, that goes. That's along. what lantern control is built off of. <laughs> True. But that goes along with inevitability as well. If you know that they can, you know, they can beat you. Yeah. But you can stop it. Would you not? You always stop it. <laughs> yeah. So always kill the mana dork. Uh, talk about that too. Yeah. Way to way to tie it in. Way to tie that one. Good job. I do uh, what I can. So this <laughs> brief overview, but some final points. It can work for you. And it can work against you. Um, 
the strong players recognize when that power has shifted. And it can be as soon as you sit down to play somebody, or it can be once you top deck your whatever, right? So understanding those scenarios gets you to wins more, right? Yeah. It's like improving your putting in golf. If you can improve when you recognize inevitability, I guess your score goes up, not down. Way to relate that to a sport that isn't super popular. Sport. I say super popular. I just mean it's not like, you know, sport. A sport. Um. (laughs) No, anyway. um, But, you know, that's something I want to say. Improving. We play disc golf. He understands. You understand. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Right. Anyway. I don't play disc golf well. I don't know. (laughs) Neither do I. It's fine. Uh, so it can work for you, can work against you, recognize that. Um, yeah. you can ignore it entirely, is point two. If you race and that's all your deck does, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. If if your deck is all about dealing damage, yeah. just deal damage. Ign- if they have it, make them have it, as you've pointed out in past episodes. Ignore this episode, go listen to the aggro episode. Yep. Uh, but you know, there's that. Um, players can lose it depending on any number of variables, is my final point. Um, and I kind of just alluded to that, but the top of the deck could be the win, or it could be a, a land. land. <laughs> so <laughs> it can change at any one point. So you need to focus up. Yeah, be able to know. What you're I like that. With. It's it helps you to. I think this is a really good thing just to make yourself think about a little more. Mm-hmm. It's something that you probably already think about or already know when the yeah. game is shifted into somebody's favor and stuff. But think about why. <clears throat> Why did it shift in their favor? Why did it shift in my favor? Um, why should I race here? Why should I hold back here? Things sure. to think about. Hopefully this is a topic that if you do give some thought, this is how you develop and become a better magic player. Yeah. Because you can think, slow down a little bit, think about the plays that could happen and think about the plays that give you the outs. Mm-hmm. And and that's how you become a better magic player. You find the line yep. and that's what you need to do. Um, and with inevitability, play to yours and i think a player that does this really well um watanabe oh god you yeah i saw um one match i don't remember what tournament he won probably uh <laughs> yeah i'm not remembering what which one specifically but he was <laughs> playing uh a really just fine-tuned tempo um and he had a pretty good board he countered a spell from his opponent whom i don't even remember now but then he just went on the offensive and yeah. he's got like one one flyers and i'm like hey okay but he knew at that point yeah. that all right they are turns Now's away the time yeah so being able to recognize that really seal it, the deal for him it can come down to a turn right mm-hmm. like if, De- it definitely. if the game is close and you miss a, a turn of damage at some and some capacity or something like that mm-hmm. you can very easily lose a game that way oh yeah um and that's where i think again thinking through this as much as possible that's how you become better. That's how you can recognize it better, and that's how you can take advantage of it yeah. uh, more often. Hopefully, that's the goal. Hopefully, so think about it. Um, a good topic. Thanks for Thanks, that, guys. I'm glad you brought that one up. Uh, a very, very useful. You're topic. welcome. Uh, and you're welcome. Hopefully that, that helps. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, with the main content out of the way, we move to our final segment. Oh, sponsored yes. by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles, uh, again in the Rock Hill, South Carolina area. It's in here. You're Kev. doing weird stuff. Um, if in you're here. in Charlotte, North Carolina, like ten minutes south, you're there. So I would encourage you to check them out. They've been helping us out a lot. They've provided a box for us to do these cracker packs, as well as a separate box which we yes. used in the Thursday episode. Uh, whoop, so. Whoop. Definitely go check them out. Facebook and website are both linked in the description. Yeah. Uh, so feel free. Big thank you. Hang out with them. They're very, very cool. Um, with that, we are looking for specific gold cards. Oh, yes. Um, and it's in here. Is it? You think so? Cool. I just saw. No, it's not. Um, mine is Gideon of the Trials. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> mine is Combat Celebrant, which I'll have to get to you later. Yeah, I guess it's not going to happen this time. So as we have been doing uh, in recent episodes, we usually like to go through these, uh, pick a few of the cards that we think are the best for a limited environment. Um, And I'll go ahead and go first. First of all, my rare is Throne of the God Pharaoh. We've gotten so many of this card. Is that our fifth one? Maybe it's fourth or fifth. I don't know. It's ridiculous. I'm not going to take it. Um, Cards that I like in this pack. There's actually kind of a lot. Um, 
So there's a decimator beetle, which is just fantastic. Oh gosh, um, yeah, and probably the pick in this in this scenario. Uh, there's also a wayward servant, which if you're going to do the zombie deck, that's the build around card for it. Sure. Compulsory rest, not a first pick card, but it's an okay pseudo removal spell. Sure, that's fine. Naga vitalist again, if you're it's not first pickable, but for ramp, it's quite good. Wing shepherd is a card I'm very impressed with. Really. Um. It, it provides you cycling early game if you need it, but it also provides a late game flyer, which in this format seems to be great. Um, Supply Caravan is also pretty good. It's two bodies for five. Um, and then Manticore of the Gauntlet, uh, which, you know, pings an opponent for three and also is just a big body. Yeah. Um, but nice. I think Decimator Beetle probably would be my pick. It would be okay. between that and the Wayward Servant, just because I like Wayward Servant. Okay. Um, so that's where I am at. I like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, my rare was not Ooh, Combat Celebrant. Yeah, it's solid. Uh, Archfiend of Ifnir. We talked about it before. 5-4 yeah. with flying 4-5. Uh, whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one minus... Excuse me. Minus one minus one counter Sessible. on each creature your opponent's control. Uh, and you can cycle it for two. Um, it's great. I can't yeah. imagine you'd cycle it, but uh, <laughs> no. Maybe sometimes you need to. If you absolutely needed to, it gives you that yeah. out. Though. It's great. It's that's a build around card again, like we mm-hmm. say, and it's also a bomb. More power to our yeah. Um Other than that, we've got Deem Worthy. Oh, a great card. Yeah. Uh, removal in limited is is really strong. Set up premium there. Yeah, and seven damage. Gets rid of pretty much everything. Yeah, um, and two damage actually hits a decent number of yeah. the early game plays. So if you have right. to cycle it and deal two, it works just the yeah. same. It's not bad. Um, and then Warfire Javelinier is really the next best card, I'd say. I didn't have a great pack. Um, so when he enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So in like a... The blue-red instant yeah. sorcery deck. That's what Enigma you, Drakes, stuff like that. Yeah, that's um, what you want. But there, there wasn't much else for limited. There's a sacred, a sacred cat. cat. Yeah, but it'll wheel. It's first pick, right? <laughs> uh, no, I do like Binding Mummy also. I don't like it first pick. Not again, first pick, but, but I think it's good. I think if you're in the zombie deck. Yeah, you would go Wayward Serpent over this, but you'd hope yeah, it gets back to yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but there is a Vizier of Remedies in this pack. Which, if you've listened to our counter company deck tech, you, you will know, know is a crazy good card. How much I like this yeah, guy. Yeah, you love that card. Mm. <laughs> yes, All know. right, guys. We have hopefully concluded our filler fun day episode. Um, I think so. It'll only go downhill for me. It'll here, only so. go downhill. No, uh, yeah. we have a lot of fun with these episodes. We yeah. hope you guys enjoyed this one uh, and enjoyed the Cracker Pack. Again, thank you to Grand Slam. Uh, thank you, Grand but Slam. with that, I think we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. Resolving.